my pleasure. So one of the questions that is asked of me often, and Amadeep, you asked me when you found me and invited me to be here today, is can we force focus? You know, how do we do it? How how do we get people to want to learn the incredible information that we want to share with them? How can we help people pass tests? Tests create an immense amount of stress. I was working in uh, out in the world and met a first grader. So that's six years old, right? Six-year-old child. And this kid was completely stressed out about an exam because in here in the US little kids are given tests and they're they're marked and it, it has to do with tracks of study and how they'll be judged and placed and this little tiny child was so stressed out and his mother brought him to meet me and we talked about grounding and centering and breathing and just like you both expressed even just after maybe 10 minutes of talking with me he felt like he had some tools now what if we were the one giving the test how how many i i don't know about you but i have been in situations where uh test booklets are placed on a desk a pencil's there that's all you get the clocks mm -hmm. on the wall, the teacher's like, okay, begin. There, There's no, I don't feel like I'm supported. I feel freaked out. I feel scared. I feel stressed. And what if instead the person running the exam gave a few minutes for everybody mm -hmm. to breathe, but not only that, but to have everybody then after they felt a connection with each other mm -hmm. to close their eyes and then to have the leader, the teacher, the examiner tell them things that are positive. Imagine you're opening up the booklet. You can see yourself picking up the pen. You're writing your name and you're looking at the questions and the answers are just flowing to you. Just a little bit of positive affirmation to help everybody along. It doesn't take that much time to do things like this. And this could be, say you're working one-on-one -on -one in a tutoring situation and your, your brand new uh, student shows up and mm -hmm. you take some time to do that. And then you take a little time, of course, to get to know them. But then when you're ready to begin administering the information and teaching the material, what if you preface that with how great they're going to do and how easy it is to absorb it? This Ambika actually brings the importance of having uh, parents as well as teachers and tutors in this case be prepared to do their part. So when the child comes six year old comes to you stressed out because of the test coming, there should be a conversation with his mom too, probably, or his teacher. Oh well, most definitely. And in that case of that story I told, that was that was I was actually in residence working teaching meditation in a center, and this mom brought the child because she didn't know how to help, and he was really interested in stones and rocks, and he and he knows I am. They knew I am, and so they wanted to know: Are there any? Are there any stones? Are there rocks? And and I said, you know, yes, there are, and we could definitely look at that. But I, let me show you what you can do with what you've already got in your body, with breathing, and then centering and grounding. You know, I, I see I see sometimes videos of teachers who have ways of greeting their students when they're coming in one at a time, and they have a chart where the student can choose a hug, a dance. Or, mm -hmm. just, or a bow. And I think that's so beautiful, but how do we do that virtually, you know? Especially with a big group. So this is my idea of, you know, looking around the screen, acknowledging each other, taking some breaths together. I think that's a way for us to get connected and get focused. Very true. Very true. And I also sort of come to notice that uh, a lot of time when kids are stressed, uh, it's also because of, uh, unprecedented expectations from them, maybe by their own parents, uh, on, on getting appropriate marks, on, on, on being at a certain grade, certain level, 
uh, let them be, uh, let them breathe, let them uh, be their natural self. Uh, so, so I think that is what uh, schooling should be all about, and not about uh, killing creativity and and killing the life out of that young child who's just trying to learn, who's just trying to trying to exist uh, in in this competition. Mm -hmm. uh, with, I want to quickly add one thing is that we we do want to uh, have our students perform their best, but at the mm -hmm. same time, they, we should kind of introduce the notion that there is no failure. It's always just feedback. Mm -hmm. If exactly. you get low mark this time, low grade, so let's study more. Let's understand what is not mis uh, what what is not understood. Let's mm -hmm. practice more. So I do okay. believe that this kind of you know. Uh, I'm not good enough because of my low grades. This should go away. This mm. is not. It shouldn't be a part of learning. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, I agree. I, I feel like we need to, as educators, be conscious of building self-esteem rather than breaking it down. That's a brilliant uh, comment. Uh